I always get to learn the hard way that you shouldn't drop stuff and expect it to work. And that's exactly what happened here. One of my USB-C power adapters got knocked down and it stopped working. And this was a good one. I think it's like a, either a 45 or a 60 watt unit. They can output up to 20 volts to power high power USB devices. So I'd kind of like to get this one working, but the problem is it's all sealed up. I'm gonna make short work of it with that cordless Dremel tool to get into it and see what's wrong. Let's check it out. I'm gonna use my new Utman cordless Dremel tool to cut my way into this power unit. It goes through there like a hot knife through butter. Make short work of this. I'm using the diamond grit cutting wheel to cut into this power supply. And it's making short work of it, as you can see. Now, I don't know what happened to this unit. All I know is it got knocked down and it didn't work. So hopefully it's going to be something relatively simple. As this was a nice power supply capable of charging up any USB-C device, no matter what, whether it was a low power or high power device. This was a great unit. I think it's, I think it's 45 watts. I do have a, a 60 water as well. But I think this one was a 45 water. This might have been a 65 actually, because I got a couple of them. And there it is. Now this adapter was not working. That's why I opened it up. We're going to see if we can get this thing to run. Uh, maybe it's something simple. I'm hoping it's something simple because I don't have any, any service data or anything on this. This is just a standard power supply. So I'm thinking perhaps it wasn't getting power. The way that the contacts get made on this is it's a friction connection. So if one of these connections wasn't good it may have killed power to the unit as it was working and what happened is it got dropped and once it got dropped it stopped working so I'm thinking maybe something got bounced out of position first things first though we're gonna check fuses and so forth and see whether um, the fuse has popped there's a couple fuses on here I can see it has a conventional non resetting fuse and this is a resettable fuse It'll automatically reset itself after it uh, cools down if it's in an overload state. This first fuse is a 3.15 amp. Let's just check and see whether it's open or not. So this is coming from the, the line because you got neutral and you got line here. So line through the fuse is good. Then it goes through the secondary fuse, and that's also good. Neutral comes along here, goes through this coil. There's a choke here. Line goes through this side of the choke. As you can hear, I've got continuity. So that part is not damaged. From here, it goes into a bridge rectifier, which we can't see because it's buried under here. But I think the first things first is let's just uh, try powering it up with a couple of test leads and see whether the unit will power up. So I'll power it up and I'll measure for voltage on the main capacitor down here. See if we got voltage, primary voltage from the main capacitor. I don't think it really matters what the polarity is here as long as I connect it up I'm going to my isolation transformer anyway so it's not going to matter between line and neutral but what I will do is I will connect it through the dim bulb tester so that if something were short it's just going to not going to do any damage other than turn on the light bulb. dim bulb tester is on the same circuit that my light is on Okay, let's uh, first check for voltage and see whether I've got any power. I'm going to check across this capacitor, which is right here. 
course it's zero because it hasn't been powered up I've now given it power am I going to get any voltage across here we got 166 volts this should be running if this if this is working I should be able to plug my phone in I'll just plug in my my um, USB-C and plug it into my phone no that wasn't it that was just my notifications okay um, let's see if this thing turns on it says connect charger yeah no kidding um, let's turn it on and see what happens will this turn on if it does then it's a connection problem because it wasn't turning on before okay it just turned on it's in charge so we know that this is working and now it's off excellent excellent so this could be a real super simple job that's telling me that the problem is this thing when it got dropped something got bounced in here and it got disconnected so let's just try reseating this unit and see whether it will work more than likely what happened is the board got bumped out of that track which is what holds the board in place making good connections with the base where the power is connected to the board just with those compression or press on fittings from the bottom that goes down like that this is where I think the problem was right here where these contacts connect to the circuit board they do it this way so that they can make the same unit see this has got a, a 400 volt rated capacitor so this would work all the way up to 240 volts and it does say AC input 110 to 240 output 5 volts through 20 volts at 3.25 amps and they make them this way so that they can slap different bases on them for different markets and you can obviously use a plug adapter but this would be available with different like different home country that's going over to Europe it would have a European plug and they just slap a different base on it when they're manufacturing it and I think probably what happened is when it got dropped something shifted and these connections let go try plugging this in I got power is it going to work Good. So it's working. Excellent. Excellent. Now I just have to uh, put this thing back together. I think probably what I will do is rather than epoxy it, I'm going to wrap it in tape and then put throw a, a zap tie around it just to hold it together. I think that's probably the route I'm going to do so that if I have to get in it again, I don't have to cut it apart. So this is an easy, nice, easy fix, which is good because this is a nice power supply it's it's a, a higher voltage so I can use it to charge things like laptops and stuff so it's gonna put some tape around it that way it'll keep moisture out and then I'll throw a zip tie around it to hold it together I guess I could even wrap the entire unit in tape for that matter it's not gonna hurt it doesn't uh, it doesn't need ventilation so that might even be the way to do it is just rather than even bother with the zip tie just wrap it in tape wrap it in tape this way and then some around the other way as well there that probably is all it needs So it started out as a demo to demo a, a DC a, a battery powered Dremel to show how easy it was to open up this adapter ended up in me fixing the adapter without even doing anything other than opening it up and reseating. There we go. It is charging. Okay. I'm happy. My my uh, USB-C charger is once again putting out power. 
we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.